hyperbole, exaggerated statements or claims not meant to be taken literally. For example, the title of this video, Things I Quote Unquote Can't Live Without, is intended to be a hyperbole. Obviously, I can live without all these things, the most important things in my life aren't even things, they're, they're people in my life, my health, etc, etc. However, comma, I think we all have certain physical items in our homes or in our spaces that do bring joy, whether it's through just their existence or through them adding some sort of benefit to your life and ease to your life. And I thought it'd just be a fun video to share some of mine. With that being said, let's start with my office. What probably comes as a shock to no one is one of my most prized possessions in my entire apartment is my journal. If you follow my channel, you know I post monthly bullet journal plan with me videos. I use this for making to-do lists, for self-reflection journaling, for money tracking, reading tracking, healthy habit tracking like hydration and expressing gratitude and meditating and all the things. I use this for so much. And more than just like using it for planning, it also is kind of like a little record keeper of what's going on with my life at the time. So all of the journals I've had in the past, like I know are gonna be really beautiful things to look back on when I'm much older and wanna know what was a typical day in the life of Caitlin at 24. <laughs> on the note of journaling, a black pen, specifically the Sharpie S gel pen, has changed my life. Maybe we can get a little focus, oh, look. Who needs to be a beauty YouTuber when you can be a stationary one? Imagine if I was like, let's do a little swatch. <laughs> I love stationary. I have a ton of it in my apartment. Highlighters, markers, washi tape, all the things. But the black pen, if I, if I had to get rid of it all, this would be the thing that I would keep. It's a solid black pen that you can rely on because you can do so much with it. It's there for you when you need to just like chicken scratch some notes. It's there for you when you want to do fancy planning. It's there when you want to doodle things on a piece of paper while on a phone call that you don't want to make. It doesn't have to be super fancy. The last stationary thing I'm really going to talk about in today's video is sticky notes because sticky notes are one of those things that just make me look like I'm more competent than I am because whenever I need to remember something, I put it on one of these and I stick them all over the place in my apartment, sometimes on my front door so that when I leave my apartment, I don't forget to take something with me. Usually around my desktop screen, there's like a few of them going around. I really like the black and white sticky note because I think they look a little more sophisticated. I got this laptop back in 2016. It's a 2015 MacBook Pro. And when I tell you this laptop has been worked to the max, I do not exaggerate. It is edited every single one of my videos since I bought it. The video you're watching right now, I've edited off of it. I used it as a student. I've used it as I went full time with YouTube after university. And it's been so reliable. It's going to break my heart a little bit when I have to upgrade it because it is nearing the end of its of its abilities. I am forever amused by the fact that one of my most important organizers in my office comes in the shape of a frog. I didn't buy this, my cousin actually 3D printed this for me on his 3D printer. And wow, before my frog here, I'm inclined to name him Albert for some reason, but before Albert came into my life a couple years ago, I was always losing memory cards and my, my job is, is filming videos for a living so it's just I would always lose track of them and worry about them being in a safe place because they're quite delicate little flowers that need protecting and the frog, Albert, protects them and gives them the coolest home ever. If I were going to be a memory card, I would want to live in a frog. You know, back in the tech drawer, it goes. Physical books, especially for nonfiction books, which all of these in my office are nonfiction books, are my go-to because I can highlight in them and they're really easy to reference in the future if I wanna go back to them. And having them in my office kind of cultivates an environment of let's keep learning, which I really love. I mean, look at that. How can you not want that? I was in the bottom left drawer of my desk is the thing that gets me through so much, which is my handy dandy hot water bottle. If I'm having really bad cramps, I need immediate relief and this is the only thing that gives it to me. Even when I'm sick and like if you have a fever and you have the chills, like this is something really nice to have. I fix his little collar here. 
amazing. We talked frogs, we gotta talk roosters too, okay? So unlike the frog, which is more of like a useful thing, this uh, rooster holds a lot more sentimental value because if you are Portuguese, then you'll recognize it as a Galu de Barcelos, which is something that you see all over Portugal. Typically, in a lot of Portuguese kitchens, you'll see one of these ceramic roosters. They come in very big versions and really small versions. So I have this white one that I got directly from Portugal sitting in my office because it reminds me of my grandparents, it reminds me of Portugal, my family background is Portuguese. Funny, when I was younger, I never thought I would look at this with such fondness because it kind of creeped me out. But now, I'm like, oh my God, how adorable. The eye, the eye really pierces you. But you know what? Pierce away. When I first got plants, I had no idea that they would have as much impact on my space as they do. I feel like their presence just inherently adds a lot of life uh, to my home. Wilma in particular, my snake plant, is indestructible. She does not die no matter what I do or don't do to her. So I would recommend that if you want a plant that is very low maintenance, a snake plant is the way to go. While I have you on my coffee table, let's also take a second to talk about my e-reader. The e-reader I'm using at the moment is a Kindle Paperwhite. Uh, this is a Kindle case. I always get questions about this case. Uh, I will try and find it and link it down below. I love physical books and I appreciate the experience of reading a physical book because it's like no other. But with the quantity of books that I read, like this year, I, I'm about to hit the 50 book mark for 2021. Without an e-reader, my, my home would be made out of books, basically. Which honestly, now that I think about it, uh, it doesn't seem like such a bad idea. But when you live in small Toronto apartments, as much as the idea of, of being one with books sounds like it could be fun, the reality is they can add, books can add a lot of clutter. So e-readers really come in handy. It also makes traveling with books a lot easier. E-books are cheaper than physical books and I can even rent books sometimes from my local library. So tons of benefits to the e-reading life and I use this device all the time time like all the time every day hours on end i love reading what can i say i feel like a model right now look at me i am in front of my air conditioner my window air conditioner right now because this has been something that i I've, of all the things on this list i really can't live without this because i did live in this apartment for the first two or three years without an air conditioner unit and you know, people think Canada is always igloos and cold, 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 but she ain't it in July and August. It's actually very hot, hot, hot. I feel like anyone who's lived in an apartment without an AC understands uh, what I mean when I say this was money well spent. One of the things I really make space for in my home is photos of my family and friends because it just makes a place feel more like home to me. And this thing right here is actually a coffee table photo album book. So it looks like a really fancy coffee table book, but it's actually a photo album, which I love because it combines decor with sentimentalness. I think there's also something to be said about being able to look at physical photos rather than just digital ones. And uh, yeah, it's just one of my prized possessions. I have my yoga mat currently in my living room because I did a workout right here in the kitchen this morning. This yoga mat is from Lululemon and I use it every single day when I have to work out. Even if I'm not doing yoga, I use it as a base for me to do any HIIT workout or cardio. I do all my workouts from home, especially these days, but um, it's cute. It gets the job done. It inspires me to get active because who doesn't want to do some jumping jacks on this kind of pattern right here? And then what bam? A little purple peekaboo moment. A yoga mat that sparks joy. It's different. What can I say? I mean, I still I still don't like the hit workouts. There's no yoga mat that makes me forget the pain of those. My coffee machines, my prides and joys, the thing that helps me get through all the days. I think it's fully established at this point that we all understand my absolute questionably strong love for caffeinated beverages. And these are my go-tos for, for getting that done, for getting those goods made. I've got an espresso virtuo, a Keurig, I've got a French press, I've got a kettle, 
that sometimes makes instant coffee if I'm really desperado, but I don't think there's much else I need to say here. I love coffee, so thus I love the machine that makes it as well. <laughs> I understand this is a bit of an odd one, but this, I'm getting a call. Excuse me. This knife right here might seem like not something special to any of you, but it is my favorite knife in my kitchen, okay? If I had to choose amongst all my knives, this would win every single time. And let me tell you, I, it gets a lot of things done for such a small knife. I'm pretty sure they're really inexpensive too. I stole this one though from my grandmother's cupboard when I moved out into my dorm room in 2015. It's still going strong. Speaking of cutting, one of my new favorite things in my apartment has been this wooden cutting board. I got it for Christmas as a gift for my parents because that is adulthood, getting excited about cutting boards. This is really exciting because I got shamed a lot during every cooking video when I talked about the fact that this is the only cutting board I had for, for years. Uh, in comparison, this is the difference in real estate I have now gained. Now I have two cutting boards. <laughs> and you know, this got the job done. I still use it for like the small things when I don't wanna wash the, the big guy here. But this, for, for cooking, this makes me excited to cook and chop veggies, chop fruits, chop all the things. Also, if you compare it to the sound of chopping on this versus so satisfying. Harsh, no. It really isn't that different now that I think about it. Come a little closer here. We also need to talk in the cupboard. Those in the US know this is everything but the bagel seasoning, but uh, from Farm Boy, it's just everything bagel seasoning. Wow, so good. I love adding this on top of sunny side up eggs. I mean, it's great if you have avocado to add this to, but just on top of eggs, scrumptious. But the spice that I truly cannot live without, like this is the thing that if it disappeared from existence, my heart would mourn it because something wouldn't feel right. It is garlic powder. Not only does garlic powder magically make every dish just taste better, but it also is a seasoning that comes with a lot of nostalgia and happy memories because I talked about my grandmother's with the wooden knife, but uh, my grandmother on my dad's side, which is my, my dad's mom, would use garlic powder all the time when making meals. So when I think back at early childhood and her, I associate her with garlic powder. I don't know if that's weird, but like it makes me, it makes me think of her every time and I use it a lot. So I think about her a lot. Happy memories associated with garlic powder aside, it's just a really incredible seasoning. If it's not in your spice cupboard, uh, I I should I would get on that. Onion powder is also a good one too. This is my favorite kitchen organizer that I own. It is by the company Ucopia. I believe it's Ucopia, right? And it's a lazy Susan, but add the element of being able to take off these bins. Let me try and show you. Look at that. The takeaway element still gets me every time. I just think this is so uh, so unique. I don't usually come across. Lazy Susan's designed in this way. These containers from OXO that I'm sure you've seen are also really great. I have a ton of them in my pantry that I slowly acquired because they can be a little bit on the pricier side, but they keep things really airtight. So uh, I, I do enjoy them and it looks visually pleasing. The fun element is there with the whole pop-up thing. I realized that organizers that combine function with a fun moment really sell me. Whenever I go out the front door, I always pack one of these guys in my bag and they are these reusable bags from the company bag game. I've talked about them a ton, but they are just such a good size. Like look how big that is. Also has enough room to put it on my arm to carry it like a tote bag, which I think is important. But the real star of these is the fact that they can fold up so quickly. I just like tuck it away and I can just slip it into whatever crossbody or bag that I have so that if I do go shopping, I have a bag on hand and I don't have to rely on like whatever store bag um, they have. I also need to bring attention to this bag right here. I got it from Whole Foods and it's an insulated bag. So this is the bag that I use whenever I'm going to do grocery shopping because it keeps everything nice and cool. And I don't know how I did groceries without it before, because in addition to keeping things cool, it's also the perfect size 
for one week of groceries for one person. I rarely need another bag in addition to this because everything stacks so well. The arm has enough room for me to put it around. It's just a great bag. It's funny, you just never know when you're gonna find the one thing that solves all the, all the problems in your life. The lighting in my bathroom is just not it. So we are gonna do some bathroom essentials in my office. The first one being my water flosser. I find flossing to be such an annoying task. I never really enjoyed it, but that really changed with water flossing. It makes it a lot easier to do, and it does a great job at removing things that you don't want in between your teeth. So if you've ever struggled with flossing, I really recommend trying a water flosser out. This is a rechargeable one from Waterpick. <laughs> Oh, that's water. Yeah, I should have expected that. My hygienist was the one who actually introduced me to water flossing. I don't feel like I heard about it too much before. So very thankful that she did that. My electric toothbrusher has been another big game changer. I'm gonna kind of keep it further away because it looks a little gross right now. I need to clean it. I feel like I get a cleaner brush when I use this versus a manual, but I also love the fact that it's timed and it pulses when I'm supposed to move to a different corner of my mouth so I know everything's getting evenly brushed. The duo, if I do say so myself. Aside from the fact that showers mean I get to be clean, showers also mean I get to dry brush and I love dry brushing. It feels, it feels kind of weird at first because these are quite, I don't know how to describe them, hard brushes. So it kind of, I wouldn't say it hurts, but it just feels like scratchy when you first start doing it, but I've come to really love that feeling. It feels like I'm getting a good exfoliation happening. This is my body body brush, and this is my bikini body brush, little baby one that I use on my bikini area. It's a little bit gentler than this guy. Exfoliating in general is just a really good thing to do if you are shaving regularly and you don't wanna have ingrown hairs. Whether I'm shaving or using my appellator, like this is, I think these are two tools really helpful and just trying to prevent that from happening because no one likes an ingrown hair. Ugh. This is a product that I've probably been using for well over a decade. It's micellar water by Bioderma. It is my go-to makeup removing technique. It's just, it never does me wrong. It removes everything. I have no reason to shift away from it. So hence the reason it's been part of my routine for so long. Tell me which part of this outfit you think I'm gonna be talking about next. talk about house slippers because something you may or may not know about me is that when I am home I always have footwear on. It is critical that they are indoor shoes too not shoes that have ever stepped foot on the dirty streets of Toronto. Toronto I love you but you're kind of gross. I find this a really strange one for me because I did not grow up in a house where house slippers or house shoes were a thing. Once I lived on my own though the concept of my feet touching anything on the ground like a crumb or like I don't know, just anything. I don't like the feeling of my feet being dirty, so shoes help avoid that. If you've never tried it though, don't knock it till you do, because I think, I think it's the way to go. I really do. Of all the things that I do to kind of get ready for the day, makeup, skincare, all those things, I feel like doing my hair is the one that makes me feel like the most confident, the most like transformed into my best self, and this is the tool that gives me that, so thank you. Well, we can see my my a little bit disheveled closet uh, in the background here, which is very appropriate for these next two things. One thing that's been really great to see over the years is how much more of an emphasis is being put on buying invest investment pieces or buying, even if you are buying fast fashion, paying attention to like what you're buying. Like, are you buying something that's super trendy that you're gonna be sick of in a season or two? Or are you buying something that is going to give you a lot of life, a very timeless piece? So these items here are things I think can aid in adding life to your clothing. The first one being a fabric shaver. You just turn it on and start shaving your garments. So if there's any like fabric pilling happening on your clothing, then you can just shave it off. And I gotta say, it's very satisfying to see the progress happen, especially during the winter or fall when I start wearing more knits that are more prone to pilling. This thing is really helpful. Something that's been a lot more beneficial or helpful in the summer for me because I have a lot lighter clothing that wrinkles more 
is a fabric steamer. I got this last year, I believe. I've owned an iron for years and I've never used it as much as a fabric steamer because ironing is a little bit more precise. I find it a little bit more time consuming. But fabric steaming, you just put the water in the, in the canister, turn it on, and then you can have items just hang and pass this through and the steam does all the work for you. And it's really quick to get through a lot of things at once so this is my preferred method of de-wrinkling things when i was trying to think about my most valuable bags i just kept going back to this one and i'm sure you guys are so sick and tired of me talking about it but it is this bag by swiss gear it's called the getaway backpack and i love it so much because it is it is just the perfect size to use for a carry-on if you are traveling but for me i use it all the time for going back and forth to my hometown it just has just enough space for me to carry all the things that I need. It also opens in a really unconventional way because it looks like a, a full on carry on suitcase. It even has like a little flap here to protect your clothing from moving and intercepting with the pocket portion of the bag. It's fantastic. And it was like, I think $50 at Nordstrom Rack and I've used it so much, gotten so much use, probably the most use out of any backpack I've owned. And then combined with the backpack, I also have some travel cubes I use the most often. This is one from Muji. It's just a solid black case that has a little bit of structure to it that makes it perfect for organizing skincare and makeup. A little dirty inside, so let's ignore that, but there's slots to organize brushes and stuff. and. It keeps everything standing upright for the most part, so I just really love that. Nothing too crazy happening here, but it's it's funny how like simplicity is sometimes just best. The tech organizer from Native Union is also one of my go-tos. It just has all these awesome slots that make it easy to organize my laptop charger, my hard drive, my Apple Pencil, all, all the things that I would need on a visit home or a visit anywhere uh, where I need to make sure my workstation is all intact. There you have my compilation of things I can't live without. I'm sure there are more things if I really thought about it that I'd be like, ooh, that'd be, that'd be a hard one to pass up. But uh, I felt like this video highlighted a lot of a good spectrum of more higher end and lower end things that add value to my space. Like the video if you enjoyed it, hit subscribe if you haven't already. I'm planning on also doing a products or things I no longer buy anymore video. I think that could be interesting. Let me know if you think so too. And I will see you all very soon with a new video. Until then, bye everyone. <laughs>